Afternoon, everybody. Glad you could tune in to our virtual town hall meeting. And tonight we have our special guest, Mayor Furman. Mayor, thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to be talking a little bit about riverfront revitalization. Mm -hmm. And before we do that, Mayor, we always have a question that we have for the week and that we ask for uh, the public to kind of give us their opinion through the comments. So please put it in here. And the question we have for this week is, if you had three wishes, what would they be? <laughs> Quite open-ended. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you're Mayor, asking, what do you think? Of course, me, absolutely, no. right oh, on the spot. I it was for the audience. It is. It is for them too. So, kind of I right on the spot. Wishes. I wish that COVID would go away forever. Yep. Um, I wish that everyone um, has long life and health. Um, and um, I wish that Milford would continue um, in the vein it's going in. Um, it, it has a wonderful, it has a wonderful history, and it has an even more wonderful future lying ahead. Awesome. And if we all pull together, we can make great things happen. Amen. Grant, what about you? We got Grant. See, we we got him. We got him already, man. Uh, um, I wish I could fix this. Uh, <laughs> Okay. You're good. You're okay. Well, please put in your please put in your comments. If you have three wishes, what would they be? And if you only have two, two, one, one, but we'd love to hear hear it in your comments. And we also start uh, the uh, week off to mayor with the COVID res COVID results that right. we have, mm -hmm. and these are numbers in totality, not in what people have as cases today, but the state does them uh, as far as uh, way back since March of last year. So, state of Connecticut is at 328,775. Litchfield County is at 13,310, which is up 27 from yesterday. Wow. Hospitalizations for the entire county are at four, which is up one yesterday. New Milford is at 2,483, which is up three from yesterday. So, I think we'd all need to be kind of cognizant of the numbers. We've had a little bit of an uptick. Some parts of the state have had way more of an uptick than we have, so we've been fortunate so far. If everybody can please practice their, their hand hygiene. If you're in a very close proximity to other people, especially if you've not been vaccinated, please wear a mask and just do all the proper things uh, to keep our numbers down here in the moment. Allie says, hello. My Hi, Allie. Allie says, hello. <laughs> Who? Allie. Hi. And Allie's, uh, uh, she, she tunes in every week, so we're happy that Allie could tune in. And uh, again, for those, please put in your comments uh, what your three wishes would be. So, Mayor, kind of turning to riverfront revitalization. Yes. Uh, this has been a big topic. Uh, it's been on our social media sites and a big topic. It's been here with the public even before COVID. I know you've led the charge as our chairman of Riverfront uh, Committee here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know you had many, many meetings. If we kind of talk about how this process started, because it was even way before when uh, we were looking at this a few years ago. Right. Um, well, I'll just start out with how I kind of got involved in this, and um, it, it started with the Panda Power Plant that uh, had been proposed by an outside company to build um, on the Century Brass property, and um, that property, as everyone knows, is right on the edge of town. It would be a huge um, blight on the town. It would have a lot of environmental hazards, including um, spewing particulate matter that everybody breathes here, and a number of us were appalled at this and um, worked very hard to send a message, and the message was received by the developer, and the proposal was withdrawn. Um, I then um, spoke with a number of people, and some people said, why don't we just buy Century Brass? But what are we going to do with Century Brass? So we needed to have some kind of a plan. And um, I approached the mayor at that point in time, um, and he saw the wisdom in a riverfront revitalization plan and appointed a committee. Um, I was elected chairperson and um, had been working on that ever since, I think it was 2017 when the committee was appointed. But now, you know, doing research and learning so much, um, if you go back to the 2010 Plan of Conservation and Development of the Town, You'll see drawings um, of where DPW was and what could be. 
Um, and if you go back through our other town plans of conservation development from when New Milford first started with their planning, um, there was always um, a page devoted to what to do with the riverfront and how to improve it. And some of the plans, unbeknownst to me, uh, that we've come up with were way back when being thought about. So um, it's been a great idea and so many people have done things. And um, But this time we want to make sure that it happens. And, you know, Mayor, uh, uh, some of the things that your committee did, and I will talk about it shortly, but, I mean, you had uh, tons of charrettes, and that means where people could come in and listen to the mm -hmm. consultant, mm -hmm. give input. Um, we heard from all sec really all sections of uh, New Milford when it yes. came to that. Yeah, the, um, the, when we first started, you know, exploring, as the committee first started exploring, we brought in a number of experts in development, and we brought in um, the town planner from Middletown, Connecticut, where they've been working on this for, oh, 20, 30 years um, to talk with us. We brought in real estate experts. We brought in planning experts. Um, and it, just to help us, guide us through the process. And all of our meetings, as any town, official town meeting, is posted and is open to the public. I know, Mayor, you've also, uh, you and the committee have also gone to uh, other committees within the town and presented to, yes, we, um, to the town so that there could be even more input, not only from the public, but from the commissions themselves. We uh, we went to Park and Rec way back when, in the very beginning of the process. Uh, we, of course, came to the town council every six months because um, we were being reappointed every six months. We went to the Lions Club, we went to the Rotary Club, we went to the Women's Club. I mean, we, we took the show on the road. We had a, a combined meeting of um, all land use commissions. Uh, we went to the Economic Development Commission. Uh, we've gone to the Economic Development Corporation. And then, you know, once we um, hired the consultants, um, both marketing and planning consultants, we had a total of five open public workshops. Um, the last workshop, Unfortunately, because of COVID, it had to be done on Zoom, but we um, publicized and we published the meeting and asked for comment at that time as well. So there's been hundreds of hours of there's been at public least, input. And, and at least 100 meetings. Um, wow. When you look at all the meetings of the committee and the public meetings and sessions. Wow. Yeah. Ray Lewis said to say hi. Hi, Ray. How you and, doing? And uh, Allie gave us her three wishes, which are help, peace on earth, and helping others. So Allie, Amen. That's, yeah. That's a uh, beautiful comments. So that's excellent. So mayor kind of staying on uh, riverfront. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the things you can tell us about the riverfront itself and really well, the need that we're trying to bring the vitality of the river to the downtown area? What were some of the thoughts of the committee? So mayor Pete, I actually have a small little PowerPoint presentation awesome. that I shared with on um, the town council and what we share with other groups. Grant, can and, you tee that up for us? Um, so I am going to try to do this, and it's abbreviated from the full show, but um, I you know, want to share it with everybody. And I'll be reading off my iPad because I can't see the screen everyone's looking at. M Mike Boucher said to say hi, Mayor. So, hey, Mike. Mike, hi. how are you? Um, so Riverfront Revitalization is a long-range conceptual plan. This is not a plan that's going to happen next week, next month, next year. Pieces will begin to happen, but this could be a 5, 10, 15, or like Middletown, 20-year plan. So um, keep that in mind. Our charter for the committee was basically to create a dynamic 21st century riverfront that we would integrate with New Milford's downtown center. And this would help us catalyze community development, economic resiliency, sustainability, and revenue generation in the form of taxes and jobs, all the while protecting the Housatonic River and the ecosystem. And again, a long-range plan for the future of New Milford. So kind of as the mayor and I just talked about, we started in 2017. We received a grant from the state of Connecticut in the amount of $170,000 for planning to hire a consultant to work with us. And the town matched that with a, um, a marketing study done by Kamoin, which would inform the need for um, what types of businesses, what types of needs we had. And also that market analysis helped to inform our economic strategies and the plan of conservation development. 
So you can see 100 meetings here, and I didn't include all the public transport uh, presentations or subcommittee meetings or, you know, town um, staff meetings. And, and Mayor, before we just had a quick question from mm -hmm. Ray Lillis, and his question was, if the river is so dangerous, why do we want to attract people to it? So, great, great question. And my my mm -hmm. thing is, there's parts of the river uh, that you can boat on, as we see down by the bleachery. People are able to boat on there. You can kayak, you can canoe, you can do these safe things. But what we don't want you to do is swim in the river. Right. Um, we don't want you to have your children wade in the river. Uh, so there's safe things you can do. You can fish uh, there. I wouldn't suggest eating the fish, but nope. you could fish there. Uh, recreational activities. But all these things are attractive. And also, just the views are spectacular. And that attracts people. And I think all that extra economic activity brings vitality to our community. Yes. And, you know, the shores of the river in downtown have changed. Because I remember 35 years ago, we'd go feed the ducks. You know, you could kind of almost wade into the river. And now you can't. It's deeper. Um, so there's really no wading going on in there. I don't think people um, are able to just walk in and swim. And like you said, right. we don't want people swimming in the river. Um, our former health director, Mike Crespin, um, who you know has retired, met with um, our committee several times because we were concerned about comments <clears throat> about the safety of the river, about um, the impact of the PCDB spill, you know, way back when in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, impacting right. here. And um, Mike said that the river, you know, the water is safe. Um, don't drink it. He's not recommending you drink right. it because it's not filtered water. Um, but it's safe to kayak in, it's safe to do boating things. He even said it would be safe to go tubing in. I mean, the one issue we do have, um, as you know, Mayor, and unfortunately we had an unfortunate incident not too long ago, is the bleachery dam. Um, but people need to be safe, and, you know, the dam is there. There are signs there not to go there. Um, and there's a portage there. So if you're approaching, if you're like I've done several times, you're kayaking down the Housatonic River, you get off at Hidden Treasures Park, and you walk maybe the length from here to the end of the room, and you're back in the in Lake Lilanona. So um, there are great ways to enjoy the river without impacting your safety. And I want to thank uh, Chief Ceruto and Captain uh, Delaney from Water Witches. They did that PSA to make sure that even non-residents that are coming to enjoy our, our uh, beautiful natural resources don't go on the dam, don't walk on the dam, don't go near the dam. Uh, especially if you don't know how to swim uh, because of those currents will pull you under and it's like right. a washing machine. You're stuck in there. You're stuck in the netty. Absolutely. I was once stuck in a um, in a rapid on the Colorado River and you just go round and round. Right, and you're lucky right. if it spits you up. So right. it's very dangerous. So back to the plan. Um, you know, this plan is, is transformational. It will change for the better. Um, our downtown um, key is... Um, Retaining New Milford's character, that's number one in everybody's mind. Absolutely. And that's why it's so important that the Riverfront Committee, that's kind of our first charge, um, is to keep New Milford, New Milford. Um, we have thematic goals that we're working with that kind of helped us to strategize. Um, and when we had the public forums, we broke up into these groups for people to comment on and give input. Um, one is the sustainability, making sure the environment is safe, the river is safe, stormwater management is done safely, um, floodplains are taken into account. Um, next is recreation. Youngsfield is the recreational capital of New Milford um, with our tennis, our basketball, the playground where we all go, um, the skateboard park. Um, and we just want to augment it and add to that. Um, you know, Mary, that was some of the things on social media that very, a lot of misconceptions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I heard from one lady, I talked to her yesterday saying, you know, are you guys going to put buildings on Young's Field itself? Or are you going to get rid of the skate park? Are you going to get rid of the playground? You're going to put all this housing right on Young's Field itself. And that's the furthest from the truth. Absolutely not. Young's Field will stay a recreational area. Um, we are talking about possibly moving the ball fields if and when 
a sports complex is built, but we will not touch those ball fields until such time as people have a place to go play ball. Um, the um, playground will stay. The um, we're, we're actually going to add recreational opportunities because right now it's a it's a summer, fall, spring park. We want to also make it a winter park. We're going to add a sledding hill. Um, we're going to add an ice skating rink. And I know there were some questions about the ice skating. Um, it will be most likely done with artificial ice because that's the most economical and takes the least amount of maintenance. We all know that we get these crazy thaws in the winter. Um, you know, years ago, the Lions Club, I believe, built an ice skating rink there. And so they saw it thaw out. Um, right. So, you know, we've looked into artificial ice. Other communities are doing it. It's the state of the art right now. And then in the summertime, that ice can be lifted. And then we have a splash pad for our kids. And there was a long thread about splash pads not too long ago where people are going to Danbury and other communities. I grew up um, in a more urban environment when I was a little kid, and I used to go down to the splash pad all the time. It was fabulous. So um, that's part of our recreational thing. And a bandstand, too. Or, oh, uh, well, or that shell, comes into shell. arts and culture, Mayor. Okay, the, one of the four pillars, arts and culture, would be an amphitheater um, so that we could have concerts there, we could have plays put on there. Um, it gives us a place to gather for special events um, around that amphitheater. You could have art shows. You could have all kinds of things happening there. And then, of course, walkability. What's so important and so wonderful about this town is everything in downtown. You can walk from one end of the downtown to the other, kind of like when people go to the mall. They walk from uh, Macy's to, I guess it's called Primark now. That's a pretty long walk. Absolutely. But people think nothing of doing it in the mall. But here you can do it in our downtown, and it's beautiful. You can go from the Historical Society to Town Hall, down Bank Street, cross the um, tracks, and go down to the river. So we want to make this a very walkable community with a lot of linkages as well. So those are the four pillars um, that will help us to let. And then also, we have a number of brownfields. And what brownfields are, for those who don't know, they're contaminated properties um, they could be contaminated from oil, the oil tanks being buried there. It could have been a PCB spill years and years ago. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. And so we do have a number of brownfields. DPW is potentially a brownfield. It's already had some remediation. But, um, you know, we have to study it and see if it needs to do more. Um, and, you know, Mayor, uh, kind of yeah. staying with that, because we did have a couple of questions, too, as oh, we're sure. going through okay. this. So. First, just to repeat to uh, those that are watching and those that will watch it after it's taped and sent out, is, again, until the ball fields are moved to a central location, community ball fields, those ball fields stay, and people use those until those are done. I know we, we're looking at and had permission with the town council to talk to Kimberly Clark about mm -hmm. the property that they have on Route 7, and some people were conjectured that we would put ball fields on the old uh, uh, site where they yeah. put the wood pulp, and that is absolutely yeah, false. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Right. We wouldn't be doing that. We would be putting on the property next to it, um, which, and we would make sure by doing some test pits to make sure that it, that piece wasn't contaminated, but we're assured that it is not. And that way we can have brand new state of the art fields all in one place so parents aren't going from one end of the town to the other end of town. Oh, I remember those rides yeah. from Hill and Plain to Absolutely. Scatico, up to, you know, all over the place, just back and forth. Yeah. And some of our baseball fields aren't even on town property. They're on uh, commercial property where the businesses had given us permission to do that. But if they continue to get busy, uh, I remember uh, Mayor Murphy, uh, talking about it, and one of where Garrick Fields are, where right. they were, business was really growing, and they needed to take some of the fields, what would we do? So if we have our own town fields, we can control it all in one central location, state-of-the-art fields, and a great place for everybody to go to. And, you know, also, um, you know, the Bulls Field, I think, is also on private Correct. property, and that property is on the market, so you don't know what's going to happen there either. Right. I mean, we don't know who the new owner will be, whether they will continue to allow the Bulls to play there or not. And so the, the building of multi-purpose fields works because the Bulls play a certain season, baseball's another season. So, 
you know, there's also um, synergy between all of these different sports and sporting Absolutely. organizations. Right. We'd be looking at uh, this property, have a BMX kind of track for those that do the, the, the biking, the kind of the outdoor biking. Yeah. And then uh, basketball courts there as well, volleyball courts. I mean, just a great place where the family can go. And uh, our adult leagues can play in these brand new state of the art fields. I just think right. it's a With win win. Win-win. Exactly. Yeah. Win win for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So Merlin had asked, uh, uh, and this is kind of segueing a little bit more into is we should consider building luxury housing around the rivers and oh. tax them. Oh. That's what Brookfield, Danbury, and New Fairfield does. Mm -hmm. And I know that's out there again, Bear, in, in uh, social media land, where the misconception is by some that there's going to be Section 8 housing all up and down uh, the, the <laughs> Young's Field, the field itself, up on the hill, which is the furthest from the truth. So, um, actually, the Riverfront Committee, you know, has, has seen a lot of um, the talk on Facebook, and um, we've put together a fact sheet, which we'll be putting out shortly. Um, but I want to read to you one of the questions, which is, will there be Section 8 housing on the Riverfront? No, the plan does not call for Section 8 housing. Our marketing analysis um, showed that seniors are going to be the primary drivers of demand for new housing in the coming years, and they will be followed by younger adults. So the vision is for upscale housing to attract new residents to strengthen our tax base and bolster our businesses. So we're considering senior housing for empty nesters or for just people who want to downsize, housing for young professionals, both single couples and growing families, and what's really important here is realize we're talking about town-owned land. So any action that the town would undertake to sell property or to lease property to someone else for any use would go to a town meeting. So that means ultimately the town residents have a say. But town residents will be involved in more ways than just that. When we start to design, because realize, as I said, this is a conceptual plan, Mayor, and so... You see little ones and twos and threes on the map, but nothing is fixed in stone. It might change tomorrow, depending on public input or the market conditions. And so we're going to be looking to the public and we'll try to advertise it more than we did before. So hopefully the people who are you know, participating in discussions will come to some of our in-person meetings and help us as well, or send us comments as we post things. Um, so you, the residents, really will have a strong say in what happens with the riverfront. This is the beginning. I know, Mayor, that's, that's great that you're setting the, kind of the record straight. Is this, isn't, this isn't something that, that has happened. This is kind of a evolving process. It's a living document. Uh, this is town's land. So as we continue to refine this, you and the committee want additional public input, want to make sure this is good for everybody. Exactly. So... That's why we're going to be, as I said, taking the show on the road. Uh, we'll be having some public meetings probably in the fall, COVID depending whether they can be in person or whether we have to do them through Zoom again. Um, hopefully they'll be in person because I like to see people one-on-one. -on -one. Absolutely. Um, but the, the, there's just so many steps to take still, So, and we want everyone to be part of it and not to just have a preconceived notion that it's a done deal because it's nothing's done till it's done. So Merlin asked a couple of questions. That first one was just talking about the buildings and the fact that we can bring uh, that real uh, uh, um, segment of population, the seniors, and then also those young professionals that can come in, revitalize with their uh, expenditures and tax dollars to help the town succeed. He also had a question is, is uh, should... Uh, um, he wishes to upgrade our high school to the technical school, reduce crime, car break-ins and thefts, and reduce taxes through cutting. Nice to have projects and expenditures. So Merlin, great question. So real quick, we'll answer him. The high school to a technical school, that would be something the State Department of Education would do. One of the things we are doing is we've worked now with our Northwest Workforce Investment Board, which is Kathy Watt and her crew. We're actually going to have start, starting them having to come into town hall. Um, once a month, they'll be very helpful when it comes to employment. And we're also working with them to provide advanced manufacturing technical training, which we'll be talking about. 
and also working with the investment board with our um, New Milford Adult Ed and Christy Martin and her crew has done a phenomenal job. So Merlin will have more information on that. I wish we could put a technical school in here, but the state of Connecticut really isn't in the, the thought process of opening up additional technical schools. So what we can do is figure out a way to kind of look outside the box and partner with our investment board, workforce board, and provide those things. And also, Mayor, um, as you know, I sit on the, Econo the Corporation for New Milford's Economic Development, and we are also talking with the Workforce um, Development Board about this. And we're also talking with our local businesses to see if there are internship opportunities Absolutely. or job shadowing opportunities so the students can go and see firsthand what it is um, out there, what, what jobs are available, and maybe help direct them as to what they would like to do. So, you Excellent. know, while, while we don't have a school, and and we do have access, of course, to Henry Abbott and yes. their courses. It's a long ride, but um, it's there. And I expect at some point they'll start to be online courses for things like that as well. That'd be wonderful. And training, um, just like there is at the college level for you know, people can go to Phoenix University, so why can't they go to New Milford High Tech? Yeah. And yeah. I know Superintendent DeCorpo is also looking at, with the Board of Ed, looking at some other opportunities, uh, and hopefully we'll have some more news on that as well. Chris Kowalski said say hi. Hi. So, so Chris and Kathy <laughs> Reynolds. Hey, Kathy. Uh, wants to say a great discussion on the riverfront. And uh, Kathy, thank you uh, for tuning in. And uh, so, Mayor, getting, kind of getting back to our riverfront. Back to my slideshow that we absolutely uh, that we just keep. I keep diverting it too. I got to get it back <laughs> up on here so I know where we left. Oh yes, yeah, so we did our four themes, four, and now we're um, and so then we're going to take those themes and we're going to take our brown fields and we're going to leverage them into a revitalization that will actually impact the entire town because as the downtown thrives, the whole town thrives. So the next slide, and this is a little hard for everybody to read um, because it's lots of little ones and twos and threes, um, is, is kind of the conceptual plan, not things in stone, conceptual plan of what will happen along the river. So I'm just going to put on my glasses so I can read my little notes here and um, go through a couple of the things. I don't have a pointer, so I can't point to them, but... Um, let's start at the bottom of the picture where you see Veterans Bridge, and I'll just kind of do it in that order. So from Veterans Bridge, we see, um, we're talking about perhaps working with the state and on the south side of the bridge, adding a pedestrian walkway to hang from the side of the bridge. It's been done in other communities. This would allow us safe access, pedestrian access um, to go south on Route 7 and will allow people coming up Route 7 to go across. Number six, which is at the very, very bottom right, um, is currently what we sometimes call the dollar store, the Halloween store, Southworths. And, um, you know, again, like I said, this is a long-range plan. So we hope to have the developers and owners of private properties jump in on the riverfront revitalization too and join us when they see how much it will help the value of their property. So we're hoping that that would become some kind of a mixed-use gateway. Maybe there's a um, a welcome center to New Milford, um, a restaurant along the river. It could be a lot of different things. Could even have it right on the river. Could have another kayak put in, kind of be our down-the-hatch um, version of what they have on Candlewood Lake, where you can pull up and um, enjoy company and, and refreshment. Um, we have, if you go up... Um, Along the bottom, you see all that stuff with the little pink things in it. That's the Native Meadows Preserve that the town just acquired um, a couple of years ago, if it's that long even. And that's um, that's kind of going to be like our, um, it's a nature preserve right here in the center of town. And um, the Public Works just put in a path so you can cross Veterans Bridge, walk down Bridge Street, and Right at the intersection of Seven and Bridge, you'll see there's a stone path that goes into this preserve. And um, it has incredible um, birding. I won't say there's incredible wildlife, but I, I mean, when you go in there, the birds are unbelievable. We know that there's other wildlife in there. There's, we've seen beaver. Um, we've seen, um, I'm sure there's deer in there, you know, but it's really a beautiful place. It... Um, 
does need some work. The youth agency maintains the trail, so there is a trail system, but we'd like to clear maybe some uh, a view to the river and maybe put a kayak uh, launch on that side so you can go across um, from one side of the river to the other. Um, we also had talked about possibly putting in as a sculpture park, like some municipalities have. Um, it's not a you know deal breaker. If we don't do it, we don't do it. But um, it was just an idea that was floated. As you come to Young's Field Road, you can see that it's a little bit different. Um, it's a little more north of the bridge, uh, west, east of the bridge, east of the bridge. And I'll explain that when we get to the traffic pattern, because I don't want to keep you bored on one slide here. Um, Right where the existing kayak uh, ramp is now, there'll be a second parking lot put there because the road will be moved to give us room to do that. Um, as you can see, the basketball and tennis courts stay. The um, number 18 is the playground and the skate park will stay. There'll be a concession and a shade pavilion and probably bathrooms because that's one of the Big complaints is there's no place um, to use a restroom on Youngsfield Road currently. Um, the splash pad ice skating path, um, the um, plantings that will be there, um, it will be a beautiful garden in the middle of it all. Um, and then where the ball fields currently exist, it'll kind of become like a festival ground. So the Lions Club will continue to do their fair. Um, goat days will continue. River fest will continue. So, and you know, we had some other wonderful things happen here. Do you remember when the Vietnam Memorial um, oh, yeah. exhibit came and it was how beautiful. wonderful? Very, and, very in the winter. Absolutely. So, you know, we'll have places for that, and there'll be electricity so that when people come to use it, they have, um, you know, like the the Lions Club, the vendors, the um, activities. They'll have power. Um, if you look up to where it says number one, um, kind of um, in the middle of the park, that's kind of pink and gray, that's our amphitheater. And um, the slope will be terraced down to the amphitheater, so it'll provide seating and walking um, at the top of the slope. So, Mayor, we had a couple yeah. quick questions. Oh, okay. So, first, Deborah Freeman wanted to know, she'd love to see some small boat slips and dining along the riverfront. I'd love to see dining too. Boat slips, we'll have to um, have to talk to. We'll deep. have to see see what have the DP says. Yeah. And but Deborah, I will tell you that going north a lot of times from because I've done this um, when you put in at Young's Field in the dry summer months. Sometimes you have to walk your kayak through the river because the river gets extremely right. low. Um, I remember going. Um, up to Sega Meadows and watching people bicycling in the river, yep. you know, because it was so low. So it's a great idea. They would have to go south, um, you and, know, for uh, most of the year. Right. Now, on the other side of the dam where the bleachery is, there they do have some slips there already right. so that you could uh, boat and the crew. Uh, people do right, crew GMS, on that part of the yeah. river. GMS, yeah. they do a wonderful job And we job have there. Addis Park. Absolutely. Um, that you can put a boat in there. Yes. Um, and... Um, and, we and, and little motorboats as well. And we had Phoebe Kincaid ask exciting projects. So she's Thank excited you, Phoebe. about this. And she says, How do you intend to ensure contracts for construction, design, architecture, and sourcing for materials for these projects favorably lo favor locally owned small businesses? Great question. That would be something that we would be putting in the bid process as we do mm -hmm. these these projects. And Phoebe, that'd be something that you can see as as once these projects begin to move forward. And we get into that type of the process. Um, you'd be able to see the bids. They're online, actually. We had Valerie, our purchasing authority agent, uh, really do a lot of uh, um, uh, tasking and actually came up with our now, our new virtual, where you can see it online, online resources where you can go in and make your bids online. So I think that's unbelievable. Right. And Ray asks, why, why wasn't the trail brought to the river? Is it part of the river walk? So Ray, great question. And I think he's thinking about Native Meadows. And Native Meadows, if you go into the trails, they actually are to the river side over there. The stone dust part, which is the central part of the meadow oh, to, right. mm -hmm. to the, uh, to the, uh, the um, sidewalks that are uh, by the bridge, uh, that was just one part. But if you go through Native Meadows into the 
the areas where there's the nature pass, you can go all the way into the river, have its own river walk. There's a beautiful uh, uh, pond in there as well, which uh, is great. And, and Ray, occasional flooding in the wet weather that because is true. it is a nature preserve. Right. Um, and one of the reasons we couldn't go in closer to Veterans Bridge had to do with drainage and DEP, exactly. um, uh, DOT, um, which owns the right of way there. It was kind of too steep. There were um, some big culverts in there because um, I, I actually walked that with um, our public works director because that would have been my preference too. But um, w the one advantage that this has is you can park your car at the big white parking lot and cross the street and get in too. So there's it's easy parking. Or well. parking all the way up uh, by Housatonic Brewery where we have the parking lot. For right, the there's a parking meadows. lot there, and then you can park downtown and walk over the bridge. Absolutely. So there's lots of places to park your car and, to go. And Ray uh, mentioned, as you did, Mayor, mm -hmm. that sometimes the river is too shallow even for kayaks, depending on the river. And, and Ray, we do agree with you. Uh, but on the other side, by the dam, uh, there are some uh, some slips there. And it would be wonderful to have a restaurant kind of on the river looking future forwarding for someone that would want to set up a business. So maybe that would happen in the future. Yeah, we're hoping because, you know, all along Route 7, those properties all are along the river. Again, we'd have to deal with, you know, floodplain regulations and all of that. But, um, right. you know, it can be done. So let's. Uh, you're off the slides. I'm assuming, Graham. Right? We keep. We he with keeps the, putting uh, them on and putting oh, them off. Oh, you as can. We, you can see what's happening. Well, yes, I can. Oh, I can't. All right. So this next slide is the picture. It's an artist's rendering, which means it's just someone's conception to kind of show you what a possibility could be. It's not the only possibility. So like I said, we were talking about having ice skating, which would be a splash pad. We're kind of showing winter because we thought people never think of Young's Field in the winter. And we want to show that it can be alive 12 months a year. On the very far right, you can see there's a little sledder going down the hill. Um, you see some of the um, concession stand doesn't have to look like this. It can look a lot more New Englandy than this. This is just one idea. Right. Um, the two buildings that we see up at the top of the hill are not Section 8 housing. They are, um, it's a mixed-use building. It is retail downstairs. The upstairs could be offices or it could be um, housing. And that we're for not... For seniors or for working professionals. Exactly. Yeah, it is not Section 8 housing. Um, and as we said, there is a need for senior housing and senior living. And the wonderful thing about having people live downtown is then they use the downtown because they're right there. They'll stop at the restaurant. They'll go to the bank. They'll start to support the local businesses. And the two build on each other. Someone who's very wise in the ways of um, development in the world, when I first told them, I'm going back to 2016, about this project, so the first thing you do is build residential housing because the housing will support the businesses you want to bring. So that's what um, this is. And again, you can see we made it look very much like downtown buildings. It's the brick. Um, it has um, awnings. It has, you know, nice molding on it. Um, we wanted anyone who's looking at New Milford as a possible place to develop and build to see what we want. So we are dictating, this is what the town of New Milford wants. We don't want steel and brick and high rises. We want something that's compatible with our downtown. And Mayor, as you said in the very beginning of the show, is if you just uh, envision this, it also has to be what the people want because it's the people's property. And all throughout this way, this process, they can get input mm -hmm. to the committee mm -hmm. and also... Uh, this is something that we'd have to go to a town meeting for if we sell the if property. If we were to sell the property, exactly so, to someone, because the town is not going to own and manage uh, mixed use right, development. Believe right. me, it's it's it will be um, contracted out or leased or sold to a private developer. So there's a lot of uh, uh, checks and balances as we go through this process. Correct, and and everything has to go through planning and zoning and conform. And wetlands and conform with all of our regulations. So um, I know, Mayor, uh, coming to some of your meetings, one of the one of the things that I know you guys have talked about time and again is to keep the character of the town 
in any of these things to make sure it is, as you just said before, uh, you know, kind of uh, in tandem with our current, how our current right. town looks. Right, right. So the next slide um, is kind of a little duplicative, but um, on the side, it talks about the plan and different types of uses. And again, this is just suggested uses. And as we go further down, we'll see if there's a market for it. Some of it's on property that the town doesn't own. It's suggested. Perhaps someone, you know, will, will as I said earlier, they might want to upgrade their property. They might want to change the use of their property. But no one is taking any property from anyone. Okay? That's that's. First and foremost, it's it's a voluntary thing if a private property owner wants to participate in the riverfront revitalization. So we're talking about putting in perhaps some, at the very top of the picture, some light industrial commercial maker space kind of thing. So let's say you're a furniture maker. You make handcrafted furniture. You could have the furniture, you know, be made there, and then you could also sell it. Um, with the retail operation in front. Say you made, I don't know, you printed books. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's for people doing light, commercial, um, artistic is what we're looking for um, activities. So two and three say townhouses and apartments. And I lump those together because the configuration here is just suggested. Um, the number is just suggested. When we get into having some real um, engineering and a good look at this, we'll see what the property can handle, um, what the town can handle, and what the town needs are. So, um, you know, that again is, is not, nothing is fixed in stone. It's all pliable. Um, on number five, where Public Works currently is, we're talking about the, pub the Public Works stockpiles, actually. I think that's more. Um, we're talking about possibly a hotel. At one point before COVID, we had a hotel company that was interested um, in locating to New Milford. We're talking a boutique hotel. We're not talking a 20, uh, 200 room, massive, you know, neon lit hotel. We're talking something compatible with the town and perhaps some kind of event center to go with it. Um, I'm going to skip down. We've already talked about the native meadow preserves. Um, number nine which is really where the um, Bank of America currently is. And um, in number 10, you know, these are places in downtown that potentially have um, a better use. Right now, um, Bank of America takes, you know, it owns a lot of property. As we all know, banking is going the way of um, online more and more and more. And perhaps they would consider you know, upgrading that property, um, putting in some other uses, and still maintaining their branch there. Um, so that's just a suggestion. Um, item 10, you know, is perhaps, again, some places where people could live and work. They could have a studio um, or they could have a shop um, and, and still live in the same place. Um, let's see. And one of the things, uh, just so everybody can see again, so... Um, I know we've talked about it time and again, but you can see here there is going to be no housing put in on Young's Field. Young's Field stays recreational. Also, DPW, which has been talked about for many, many decades, the thought is to move DPW to Century Brass. And the reason being for that is, is obviously it opens up the area, uh, that riverfront area uh, for a boutique hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, could be one of many uh, different things, uh, but a boutique hotel would be awesome. And it also gives DPW their chance to put all of the vehicles that we've been purchasing under one roof. They've been they've outgrown that facility for many years. It's been talked about for many years. Mm -hmm. And now's the chance to do it, to do it the right way. And I know Century Brass, uh, part of the monies that we got for that uh, through our revolving loan fund and everything, had to have a use for it. And I know when Mayor Murphy applied for that, they put the move to DPW down there. She showed so, that, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is all about how we're just following the plan, so to speak, and actually uh, working on getting this done. And things take a long time, as we see, especially now. Absolutely. It's, it's good to see Century Brass having the steel removed. 
So there's, you know, there's lots of other things. One of the other things, and then I'll go on to the next one, is number 11. Um, you see little yellow lines going up and down, and that's really connective um, walkways. That's um, Bank Street. It's, um, oh, what's, what's the one by the Teen Center? What's that road? I can't remember the name. Which one? Are you Off of about Railroad that? Street, the corner there. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, be, um, Boardman. Boardman. Boardman Terrace. Bennett, we Boardman. would make it okay. look better. Yep. Um, you know, so we just want to make the downtown look um, nicer and, and have some green spaces. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And, so, Mary, we had um, a couple of questions. So, okay. Charles Bogey, who's on zoning, he yes. asked, will these slides be available? And Grant uh, put out the link for that. Right, Think. but you know what? I'll give Grant um, an updated presentation Perfect. because we've added some of people's questions into the new presentation. Awesome. Thank you, okay. Mary. We had Chris Lugwood, who's on the housing uh, partnership. Uh, partnership. Mm -hmm. He asked, how will this impact the inexpensive apartments along Railroad Street? I'm sure this does not lead to rent skyrocketing as part of town more than they already are. This neighborhood has only median income of around 30K. So I think he's alluding to the... Uh, the studio apartments that are above uh, the He's weekly rentals. He's worried about like being gentrified. Yeah, the weekly rentals that are above uh, Young's Hotel. Um, rail, yeah, they're above uh, 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 Iron Rail now. Yep, the yeah. Iron Rail. And actually, new owners are taking over uh, tonight. Oh, so that's exciting. Um, and I just think uh, uh, anything that you can do to stabilize or grow the downtown is better for all income levels mm -hmm. and all economic stratus stratuses, whether they be your median income of around 30 all the way up to 120 or 150. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that brings opportunity for the whole downtown. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go on to the next slide. And this will be very quick. This is circulation and parking. And as you can see, um, there's that orange arrow going two ways. And so that's kind of how we are moving Young's Field over to the east. And that's going to line up with, um, I think it's Spring Street. Um, and what we're also going to do is widen uh, Bridge Street so that when you're coming over the bridge and there's a car who wants to turn into Young's Field, you'll have the ability to keep going and you don't have to stand there and wait for them because that really is um, a major congestion generator. Um, and... This will help, I think, the traffic flow there. We're also working with the DOT. I know the mayor and Jack Healy are, not me specifically, in trying to get them to do something to fix the signalization there because it just is not in sync. Absolutely. And um, we're working, and it will be accomplished. Things take time. <laughs> but I know for, you know it's been a while. I stood out there, actually, with Jack Healy, with uh, Mayor Bass, um, a number of other people on our committee, I think Julie Bailey was out there, Lisa Hida, Diane Clay, there are a whole bunch of us, because we were doing traffic counts. So we stood, Pete and I stood at the corner of Railroad and Bridge, someone else stood at Patriots Way and Bridge, and someone else at Young's Field. So we could see what kind of traffic there was. And we saw firsthand, Pete and I were like clutching our hearts, because sometimes the mothers who were late for school would come down and bang that left, Right? The right. Right? Yeah. They're banging the right so they could get their kids to school on time. Um, but, you know, when people were coming out of Patriot's Way, a truck, and it was mostly trucks because trucks can't take a right-hand turn um, from Young's Field, and a lot of trucks were generated from Young's Field. They, there's no light there, so they kind of just had to stick their necks out and, and try to crawl across, and it was really very dangerous, and there were food times when we saw, you know, almost accidents happening. Um, so it's really, it is dangerous, and this plan will help to alleviate that. Um, Patriots Way will not be a throughway anymore. It will be, there will be parking at the front um, off of Bridge Street, but also it will be accessed off of Young's Field Road, and it will be improved um, to accommodate that. And you can see um, the shaded gray and blue lines. That's really public access parking, not private parking, but public access parking. And uh, based on this plan, um, we believe that we will be able to add 75 public access parking spaces to what already currently exists. 
So we went from concept to design and we um, are working a united vision. Are you on the next slide yeah. with me? Yay, okay. So this is who's gonna be involved in all this. The Riverfront Committee will spearhead and lead. We'll be working with town residents and we really do want you to come out and um, we'll try to do a better job posting actually even our monthly meetings so people will know about that even though they are on the website for the town. We want to engage the business community. Obviously the mayor is involved here and the mayor has been um, really very, very supportive of this plan as was the previous mayor. Um, the town council will be involved the Corporation for New Milford's Economic Development and the Town's Economic Development Department, the Board of Finance and our Land Use Commissions and Park and Rec. I have to add them in here. I'm sorry. Um, since they are, um, a lot of this land is under town owned, but it's under their They're jurisdiction. Yeah. Um, so we're going from concept to design very quickly. I'm going to just Patriots way. Most of you know that we have, um, added a new sidewalk at the top of the ridge so that you can walk down Patriots Way and all the way down to the river, the new path to Native Meadows. And Patriots Way has been landscaped. There's been repairs to the pavement. And in the terms of brownfields, we actually um, completed with Sustainable Connecticut recently two projects. We did an inventory of the town and also of the DPW site. And we recently applied for and received a $199,000 grant from the state of Connecticut to improve hidden treasures um, and um, to see what's going, not to improve it, but to assess it as far as any hazardous material. Um, it was um, the first electric generating plant in this town going back into the late 1700s. It also was the home of Ruggles Mill, which was one of the first mills in town. So it has a long history the ruins are still there. It would be nice to be able to preserve them in some way as a, um, as a historic site in the town of New Milford, because um, it's historic not just for New Milford, but for Connecticut being one of the first electric um, power plants. So the next phase is preliminary design, and we will seek public input. Once we kind of figure out a little more, so it's not so conceptual, it's a little more concrete, we can start to do some budgeting and let you know what things will cost. Because that, believe me, we'd like to know what they cost too, so we can start planning. Um, we are gonna reach out to developers to find out um, what they think. Is this a marketable project? Um, if it's not, they'll tell us, and we'll bring that feedback back to the people, um, to, the, to our residents, so they can hear um, themselves. Brownfields, we're going to implement the Hidden Treasures Brownfield Grant, and we're going to apply for some others um, as well, and the Youngsfield Realignment. Those are kind of the next steps that have to get taken care of. And, um, of course, the move of Public Works and uh, Park and, and the Wild Fields. So the next slide just shows you some of what, what could happen here. We could have little pocket parks around town. Um, with you know Wi-Fi, um, we have we could have historic industrial trails. We could you know when you go down by uh, Patriots Way, one of our members said, you know I drive by there. If I didn't live in town, I wouldn't know that was a parking lot. So we kind of have to let people know we're here also, and here's a place to start, park, and then go enjoy with all the information you kind of need, even for residents who live here. I think a lot of people don't realize a lot of the wonderful things. I won't go through moving public works because we talked about it, and that could be a discussion for another whole day. Absolutely. Centralizing sports fields, I would refer you to the mayor and Till Calhoun's um, Facebook stream that they did recently. Um, and then very quickly, we're almost done. The role of the Riverfront Committee is to drive the vision to balance the needs of the market and the town, and when I say town, it's the town's people, ensuring cohesive actions to implement the master plan, to make sure we match the right uses and um, industries with the right properties, to find funding sources, including grants or other incentives. And, you know, I have no problem accepting state grants. I know they're my taxpayer dollars, but, you know, I have to pay them whether New Milford uses them or not. I'd rather spend them in New Milford than have them go to Brookfield or 
Waterbury or Bridgeport. I mean, the money's going to go somewhere. It's going to go somewhere. To go to New Milford. Might as well come to us. Absolutely. Um, we're going to do some branding and marketing of New Milford, and we're going to make sure that this project is inclusive and equitable for all of our residents. Town residents, on the next slide, can provide input for planning and design. They can, um, they will approve sale, lease of town-owned properties. Any appropriation outside of the budget that exceeds, I think it's a third of a mil third now, of a mil. Um, it has to go to town meeting. So the town council can't say we're going to spend $4 million on this project without a town meeting approval. So residents really hold the reins here. Absolutely. And then we would like, you know, we're always looking for volunteers. We're looking for people to help us plan meetings. We're looking for people to help us um, do cleanup work. You know, um, Native Meadows is going to take a huge volunteer effort. The river trail maintenance, um, just your ideas. Um, we're just looking forward to it. We're not the only town that's been dreaming about a riverfront revitalization. Um, Brookfield Town Center that we're all watching go up as, you know, we drive by it. Um, has been in the works since before 2000. Um, and it's, you know, underway. And it's underway because they incorporated into the plan of, of conservation development. They did a long-range plan, just like we just did. And they've been able to build state money. And the state gave them money, and the state keeps giving them money. Because when the state sees a successful project, they continue investing in it. And so the state has made several investments now. They've made the brownfield investment. They've made the grant investment for planning. They've made the, um, there's one more investment. It just slipped my mind. Whatever. The state has invested here, and they will continue to do that. Um, you know, the, Mayor, that leads to yeah. Ray Lewis's question. Was, hey, Ray. Where, where will this magic money come from? Hey, Ray. <laughs> so it's going to come from state grants. It's also, if a developer is going to develop uh, a property, let's say they're going to do the hotel. And right. they obviously would assume the project. They would look at uh, doing the revitalization, the rebuilding, let's just say, of the hotel. They would do it. Right. And then they would reap the rewards because then they would sell or rent, or actually rent, the hotel rooms so that people could come and stay and spend their money here in New Milford rather than having to go to Danbury. And I, this is um, me personally, I don't know if it'll happen, but... Um, I think that that developer should also contribute towards um, the building of um, Young's Field and the maintenance Absolutely. of Young's Field as, as it's you know, planned. Um, I know in Meriden, which is, one of the, is the example I'm showing you down here on the slide in the bottom, the Meriden Green, used to be this huge silver plating company. And it, was, it just polluted, it, I mean, all kinds of chemicals. It was in a flood zone. The river was actually buried and ran underneath the building. I mean, it was just a mess. And so, over the years, Middletown started to, uh, I'm sorry, Meriden started to um, apply for FEMA money, FEMA planning money. You know, it's a, it's a process. And the process is real. Government is a process. And absolutely. you need to follow the rules. And the rules take you to a final product. So in this case... They followed the process and they got funds and they converted that horrible um, old factory site into this beautiful park. And, and they're encouraging development around it. The state has poured a ton of money into it and, um, and it's being used by thousands of people. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. And the mayor, we have Deborah Freeman again. She asked, she's looking forward to more meetings. Right. And she wants to say outside of Facebook, how are these planning meetings going to be announced? So for your com committee, right? How can she find out more about that? Well, we're we're on the town website. Mm -hmm. um, we are, um, you know, if you and I know it's sometimes not so easy to navigate. I've used it so many times. I know my way around. So but the meetings, you, right? They could go to www.milford.org. Right. Click on the top government. Right. Exactly. Then you click down agenda and minutes. And well, then first you be, click on the committee. But, well, you can click agenda in minutes, then the committee drops down, and then on the drop down, you can go to your committee. Yeah. And then the meetings and agenda minutes. So can I think Pete, from first there. you click on who you want, like yep. town council, and then comes up agenda minutes, and then whatever. So um, that's there. And then also on the homepage of the town, um, 
Well, I'll just tell you right now. It's the first Wednesday of every month. Boom. So now you know when we're meeting. The problem is we have to figure out where we're meeting. So we might actually have to move that date because we would like to get this E. Paul Martin room so it's big enough for people to come in. And we're just working on the logistics there. But we will announce it. And Deborah, um, I promise I will send you personally. Um, I will um, instant message you on Facebook to let you know. And um, we will. I will post, and you know, I'll stop posting on the uh, New Milford Connecticut page. And we also have awesome. a Riverfront Revitalization page where we'll post. And so if everybody wants to join that, then you'll find out what's going on. And Including also, River Fest that's coming up October 2nd ask, man, and 3rd. That that's going to be October 2nd and 3rd, and we're really excited about it. Um, state before I can announce it, so stay tuned. But it'll be a great time. Awesome. And it's free to the public. All right. We have any mother any any other questions, Grant? Because my mind just uh, oh here we go. I just lost it for a second, but now I'm back on. Um, and Kathy asks, would this overview include any possible liaison with the long plan return of the railroad and train? So great question, Kathy. Uh, I know we've been uh, uh, working uh, with uh, uh, State Representative Buckby, State Senator Minor. Uh, as far as trying to bring back railroad service to New Milford. Uh, that's still an ongoing uh, conversation with them. I know the Western Council of Governments, WESCOG, has approved us to have another, because we're going to need it, a, another study to make sure that New Milford can handle at least one station, Brookfield and New Milford. We're hoping now with this ARP uh, funding that the regions are getting, WESCOG, Westcog included, that they can fund this study so that we can get this uh, moving forward. So I'm hoping we can get the train at some point in the future. I think it'd be a boom to our town. And let me add one more thing, Kathy. Um, the I forget which department in New York has given a million dollar grant to the city of Danbury to study. It's called the Maybrook Extension. Um, there used to be a train from Danbury to Brewster. Brewster, I think, right? Yes. And so they're looking at reinstating that. And I did meet with the planning director in um, Danbury just to see if New Milford was part of this. And yes, part of their study will include, because they're going to need traffic to use that line, right. so it will include train service to New Milford also. And... Um, Another, um, you know, when we talked about what would be downtown, we, we did take into account the fact that the railroad would return. Um, yeah, our consultants saw that it wasn't a, a live line, and one of their first things was, oh, well, we could make this a rails-to-trail thing. We said, no, the train is coming back. Absolutely. The station is staying. The train tracks are staying. And possibly there could be a stop at Century Brass, which is right up the road, Um it's, you know, just to have a parking area there so that people who are commuting or taking the train overnight won't be using up our downtown parking spaces. So, um, you know, the tracks do go up there. The mayor maybe hasn't heard this directly from me yet, but this is one of the ideas that we did bounce around um, and, you know, will be considered because there's also state money for transportation improvement projects near a, um, a downtown. So there might be some way to hook that in. Um, so it's all harnessing those yeah. federal and tax dollars as other towns have done to really, you know, kickstart this process. And so, uh, Mayor, I want to thank you very much oh, for spending you. time with fun. us. I'd love to talk about this And uh, this is yeah. a wonderful opportunity for our town. Um, instead of looking backwards, we're looking forwards uh, using uh, our history and our heritage and resources to really move the town into the year 2050 and beyond. I think it's great. I want to thank you, Mayor, and your committee for really uh, doing this this really hard lift and yeah. continuing to do so, Mayor. So thank like you. It's thank a wonderful committee, Pete, by the way. I just want to say that, you know, this is this is the work of a lot, a lot of people, a lot of hours. Um, the actual report, which I'm not sure if it's posted, but I'll make sure. It you know, if you want to find, there is a Riverfront page or section and it's under community, I believe. Yes. 
And so we're going to start to flush that out because right now the slideshow is there, but we'll start posting some other things there for people to see. Awesome. Including our meeting schedule. So that'll be easy to find the whole year in one um, felt swoop. Perfect. So again, so, thank you, Mayor. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, Grant, thanks for, uh, again, great job tonight. And again, everybody, thank you for tuning in. And we want to thank, as we do each and every meeting, I want to thank all of our first responders, our medical community, our critical workers, town workers, our teachers, our principals, our lunch ladies when school is in, <laughs> um, everyone that's been involved, uh, those that take care of our seniors through this pandemic. We couldn't do this social without you. Social services. Absolutely. Our social service our team, senior center team, all those so town many. employees that just do phenomenal work and volunteers, our volunteer mm -hmm. army at our vaccination center, New Vance Health, and their partnership with us as we continue to vaccinate uh, people that choose to get vaccinated. And now we're doing our COVID testing mayor as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, we skip Thursday because we have the uh, the food, uh, our food bank there. Mm -hmm. And then Friday we do it. So it has the opportunity and it's free uh, for those uh, oh, wow. individuals that want to get tested, uh, that have feel the need that they do have those uh, um you know, uh, exhibit those symptoms or mm -hmm. want to just be reassured. Right. You have the available to do so at there. And I can't thank uh, Lisa Morrissey and our health department team for that as well. And our IT team that's kind of making all this happen as well. Yeah. Great. So again, thank you, everybody. God bless New Milford Proud, New Milford Strong. New we'll Milford Proud. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you again next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.